what is the difference between syndig larsen johansson syndrome and osgood schlatter disease in the pediatric knee? They're both common conditions in growing adolescents that worsen during growth spurts and physical activity. They occur more commonly in children who play sports. They can be differentiated from each other on ultrasound by visualization of bone ossifications at the site where their symptoms are occurring. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of a normal proximal patellar tendon compared to one with syndig larsen johansson syndrome in the long and the short axis. syndig larsen syndrome affects the lower pole of the patella at the proximal end of the patellar tendon attachment. The ossifications present are longitudinal in orientation and appear as bone spurs in the image. These ossifications will eventually become part of the patella with closure of the growth plate. Next, we have a side-by-side -side comparison of a normal distal patellar tendon compared to one with osgood schlatter disease in the long and short axis. osgood schlatter disease affects the anterior pole of the tibia at the distal end of the patellar tendon insertion. Irregular transverse ossifications or fragmentation at the tibial tuberosity will be visualized. Adjacent soft tissue swelling and patellar tendon thickening may also be seen. These findings can be visualized into adulthood if this condition is left unresolved. Until the patient is finished growing, there will be growth plates visualized at the end of the long bones. This new bone formation consists of unossified cartilage. As the body grows, the tendons can pull on this cartilage at the tendon attachment sites, causing irritation. Symptoms will typically resolve when the bones are finished growing. Here's an example of what a normal growth plate looks like. This is the tibia. I hope this helps you decipher things a little easier when scanning a pediatric knee. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the Learn MSK Sano channel.